Hello, welcome to the one and only Tuesday lecture from DGM on the subject of Thrack Attack. So half of you can now run instantly screaming from the room. For those who don't know, Thrack Attack, I have it over here, is an album we made in 1995 and it's an imagined one hour of King Crimson improvising. I think the US version was stickered with a warning sign saying warning uncensored improvisation or something similar. And uh, it was made of the one and a half minute sections that happen in the piece Thrack. And either Robert Fripp or I had the mad idea, what would it be like if that one and a half minute section went on for an hour? And those who bought that album know exactly what it now sounds like. Apparently it was used as the music in the background of the animation studio when they did the Toy Story. I've never been quite sure what to make of that. Um, but there was an interesting feedback loop because when we made that album, we lengthened the improvisations, but the band went out and toured again in 1996, and they themselves then lengthened their improvisations or changed them slightly as a response to what they'd heard on the album. So as soon as we'd finished that tour, um, uh, both Robert and I thought, oh, we should go back and make Thrack Attack again because there's now diff a different style of material to make it with, except that in 1996, both of us were far too sane to actually do it. So the idea was shelved until the new Thrack box set was proposed at the beginning of this year. And I said, well, if we're ever going to do it, now is surely the moment that we need to go and remake Thrack Attack. I think it was Thrack Attack to the Revenge was exactly what I called it. And I think there's that saying that a, a suggestion is as good as a volunteer. So having put forward the idea, I realised I was now going to have to go and make this album. I did notice that when we first made the very first Thrack Attack, I think Robert was present in the studio just about the whole time. He certainly used to come down when we were doing the long evenings um, in the studio. He used to come in with a bottle of red wine and two large glasses to power us through the evening. But I did notice that during the remake, Attacker Thrack as it's now known, he didn't appear once. So perhaps one of us has learned from experience and one of us hasn't. Um, and Thrack Attack is interesting because it's the process of recording with found sound. So in effect, you are learning to compose using pieces of music that already exist. And the process is that you, the first thing you do is you simply listen to all the improvisations. I think I listened to about 50 versions of Thrack from over three continents. And you listen to each of them and you start noting down the tiny bits you like. I've actually dr dredged out of the archive the appalling notes. I don't know if you can see these, Alex. The appalling notes that I wrote at the time. So. Um, uh, this one says uh, hi-hat riff plus age running line with little asterisks. RF solo has got an asterisk. Age stab has an asterisk. Seagulls. I could, if we go downstairs in a minute, I could play you seagulls. So loosely, you ju um, and so if you go through the places. This is Madrid, Bordeaux, Madrid, Murcia, Lyon, Mannheim, Cologne. RF's fast fills were apparently very good in Cologne. There was a foghorn in Mannheim. Nuremberg obviously liked most of it. Um, RF big string chords, sustains, which is when the three of them play something very akin to a string quartet. There's one at the very beginning of the Project 2 live album, for those who know that. Dortmund, Hamburg, Tony's plucked bass line I liked. Chemnitz, Prague, Manic RF piano, uh, Pressov. Sorry, Robert, I wrote RF bells not. I can't tell you why, but... Um, uh, there was a Glock section I liked in Warsaw, uh, Burundi drums in Berlin, Budapest, and, and so it goes on. That's actually the easy bit. So the first thing you do is you, you go through and you listen to the pieces a lot and you start noting down the ones you like. You either score a tiny bit to try and remember them, you give them silly names like that to try and remember them. And during the whole of that process, you really still have no idea how you will ever build an album. You get the bits and... Uh, so you carry on, and that probably carries on for a couple of months, not actually doing it full time, but just listening and listening and thinking and thinking, until eventually your head is so full of their bits of music that you're becoming a bad husband and you're waking up in the middle of the night going, oh, thrack, at which point probably it's time to actually go and um, do this thing. And the best thing I think is we'll go downstairs, because if I go downstairs to the studio, I can show you exactly what we do. Here we are in the studio. This is where we did the editing for Thrack Attack. Um, it's in a program called Logic. And if I zoom out a bit, you'll be able to see the whole of the file for Thrack Attack. There it is. Um, and each of the colors is actually a separate edit from a different city. 
uh, the whole thing lasts about 50 minutes, and I think there are 30 or 40 edits, so there's roughly an edit every minute, in fact, throughout it. And I was going to play a little bit from Ventura. So if we start here, we're now in Ventura. Las Vegas. We've now moved to Pisa, hopped from America into Italy. And this one is actually very like a string quartet part, but with the with Bill on the brushes, and down here are all the separate instruments. So this, if you'd like to play them, this is just the that's just the microphone with Bill's snare drum on it. If I move down, in here, this is just Robert's part. This is Tony Levin's part. He's bowing his stand-up bass. A wonderfully sad sound. Adrian Ballou. Trey Gunn. And he's mixing them all together. Out of another leap, we're now in Madrid. Similarly, that snare part, if I can find it, would be. We're now in Monterey. <laughs> and Robert's off on his manic piano sound. So unlike a Thrack Attack, when we did Thrack Attack, Thrack Attack was based on the board recording. So we didn't do this mixing. It was literally just the stereo recordings from the night that we edited together. Um, in making Attack a Thrack, I've actually gone to the multi-track so that actually I can blend the sounds better. It also meant that I could do a surround sound mix. So thrack, uh, Attack a Thrack exists in surround sound, which is astonishing because you have the six of them all the way around you. Um, the other question I get asked a lot is, effectively how do you know what to edit, which bits to put next door to each other? And I think there are two or three answers to that. I remember Robert being asked that actually years ago by someone when I was in the studio editing and Robert turned around and said, oh, because David has perfect taste, <laughs> which I'm sure he meant as a compliment, but um, I think what he really means is that you, you have perfect taste for that music. Effectively, you are it's not really subjective. I think it's quite objective. You simply have to do what the music demands. And I know when I made Attack a Thrack, 
I took, I've got a dog distracting me here. When I did, uh, when I did the tachythrac, I took, um, I just started with the first 30 seconds. Probably the only random decision I really took was where shall I start? I remember thinking, I quite like this one, I'll start there. Went on for about 30 seconds. And the end of that 30 seconds, it was obvious to me. I listened to it and it stopped. And I thought, oh yes, the next note should be this note that I remember hearing somewhere earlier. So you go and find that bit. That's how, like all these edits, and you, you put that section in, you let it play. And at the end of that section, you think, oh yes, it obviously wants to go here. So to me, it's, it's a question of trust the music. I, I keep saying that I don't think Rob, Robert has an aphorism, trust the music, but if he doesn't, he should have, because really that's what it is. It's not, it's not my music, it's their music, and you simply have to persuade yourself to get out of the way. And that's actually the most difficult bit. It's nothing to do with me. It's not really to do with what I like, what I dislike. It's simply uh, adopting the... I don't know, the spirit or allowing their music to enter you and then just doing what the music demands. Um, in that sense, I always say I like to, be, I like to think of myself as an in, invisible producer. You know, you either get producers like uh, Phil Spector or Trevor Horn. You know, if you go to Phil Spector, it's because you want to be Phil Spectored or Trevor Horned. Uh, the alternative is actually that your role is to be entirely invisible. And actually, it simply is that you're, you adopt their music and you understand their music and you deliver. So there is King Crimson music and my job is simply to deliver King Crimson music perfectly over there. And in this case, to go and listen to all their pieces and put them together perfectly as the music demands and end up with one Thrak attack. Um, which hopefully I have. It's now in the Thrak box. So, <laughs> so you can all go and listen and um, hopefully love it and enjoy it. So thank you for listening.